Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Board Game Inquisition, where we're here to offer you insight and information about the board games you might want to have in your collection. And welcome to August's Monthly Roundup. <music> Greetings fellow travellers and welcome to September. Oh my gosh, how... Do I say this every month? I probably do. I think I have a terrible tendency to repeat myself. Um, but my gosh, is time flying. I can't believe it's September already and technically the end of summer. Um, so I should probably get rid of my fan soon, get my fireplace going. Ugh, I don't know. I, don't, I have no concept of time. I'm absolutely terrible at it. How has your month been? Um, hopefully it's been good. Um, hopefully it's been better than mine. And more importantly, of course, I hope you got to play plenty of board games. Um, so this month's monthly roundup, um, and for those of you unfamiliar with me doing a monthly roundup, welcome. Um, this is the episode where I talk about the changes in my board game collection, um, the games I've been playing, any trades I've made, usually have a bit of a wish list, some sort of ramble gets thrown in to do with board game inquisition-y stuff and sometimes not even related to that either. Um, but for me this is a chance to get to kind of sit down and kind of interact with you directly without having to have a game to talk about um, specifically. So it's been a pretty busy month games wise um, for reviews and things like that. Um, if you've missed anything, you can always just, you know, have a check at the YouTube channel and see what other videos come out. Um, and they've been a really interesting spread of games too. Um, they've all been very, very different and all had their own strengths and weaknesses. Um, but I haven't really had kind of a, a hit game in a little while. Um, has anyone else been feeling that this year that well, there's a lot of games coming out. There's very few that everyone was like, oh, I must have this. Um, ignoring Wingspan, because Wingspan happened in January and that was a lot of months ago right now. Um, and don't get me wrong, I love Wingspan. It's like my baby. But I just, I don't know. I feel like there's been nothing new and exciting for a little while. Now, Essen is coming up around the corner. And for those of you who don't know, Essen Spiel is the absolutely ginormous board game convention that happens in Germany once per year. And all sorts of cool releases come out from that. And I went last year for a whole day because I was an idiot. This year I'm going for four days and I'm bringing back up. My husband's going to come with me so I'll have someone to help me carry games and make wise choices. So I'm starting to get entirely anxious about that of course. Um, but hopefully, you know, I'll be able to bring you guys some coverage from there and I'll bring back some exciting games and tell you all about them. You know, that thing the content creators do when they go places with their games. Um, I just, you know, I wish I was less anxious about it. I got enough anxiety without adding all of this in. Um, but of course it's going to be fun too, otherwise, you know, wouldn't be, wouldn't be trying to do this. Um, and if you are going to Essen, why not let me know in the comments below? Maybe we can meet up and say hi. Hi, I'll, I'll be entirely socially awkward. <laughs> uh, but it would be really, really cool to, to meet people, you know, that um, also like board games. And I suppose Essen is a good place to do that. So speaking of board games, I'll start by talking about um, the new games that got added to my collection this month. So last month was crazy, uh, mostly due to all of the trades that happened. Um, and there were a lot of them. And to be fair, I'm, I'm doing very well in the sense that um, how long ago was our holidays? Was it a month ago? Could have been. Either way, um, I managed to get through most of my shelf as a shame. I think I think I did talk about this last month. Um, and basically, so yeah, I've only one or two games I have unplayed, which is really nice. And those just literally arrived like, you know, yesterday. So we'll start with some of the new stuff. So from the beginning of the month. Okay, so the first game um, that I'm going to talk about um, is called Kodinka. Yes, Kodinka. Have you heard of it? It's actually here, so I'll pull it. I can show it to you because it's in a really cool box. So this is Kodinka. It's tiny, tiny. I'm trying to get somewhere good in the light. Yeah, tiny, tiny. But it's got one of these cool magnetic boxes. I'm a huge fan of these things. Pop. And inside is like a whole bunch of tiles of different shapes. It would nearly remind you of a Zul because you can kind of see them on the cover. Um, except it's kind of, it's goal orientated. Everyone gets like a little thing they have to do and you move your tiles around to try and make that happen. But your opponent can also move your tiles. Um, I didn't think I was going to think much of it. To be honest, it didn't seem very impressive. But I actually quite liked it. It was very fun. It's very quick um, and it's simple. It's simple, but still kind of interesting to play. 
Um, we really need more words to describe how we talk about board games. Like, how do you talk about something that's simple but not boring? Like, really, because it doesn't make it interesting. Um, I don't know. But um, so that is Kodinka. I really quite like that actually. That was really fun. And that's for I think two to four players can play that. Um, and plus if you like tiles, the tiles in it are kind of amazing. That was good stuff. Okay, the second game, um, I finally jumped on this bandwagon, is Architects of the West Kingdom. Um, so those of you who are familiar with, I think it's Garpil game, isn't it? That made Raiders of the North Sea and that entire series of things. And they've tempted me for some time because I, I quite like worker placement games. But I've held off. I don't know why. I've never had a good feeling about that series. I just, I didn't think it would fit us particularly well. And then when Architects of the West Kingdom was on Kickstarter, um, I really, really, really considered it. Because it, people were saying it was kind of, if you were going to try any of these series of games, that this one was the one to try. It was the most Euro gamey. Um, and yet I still didn't pull the trigger. And it was actually my husband who bought it in the end, <laughs> without, without consulting with me, so he made a good choice. Um, and you know, that's one hell of a game. I, I really, really enjoyed it. There's something cool about the the way the worker placement works in it. Um, so you instead of starting with like three or four workers, you're starting with like, I don't know, 10, 12, like you have a whole pile of the guys. And so you can put loads of them out. And the more guys you have out, the better the action is. And I always like that as a mechanic. I think that's really cool. And then there are ways to take back, you know, bundles of your guys and you can kidnap some of your opponent's guys if you're feeling particularly vindictive. Um, but on a whole, I really, really liked it. Um, I'm also undefeated. Why? I always highlight the undefeated things because it's rare. So bloody rare. Um, but I really liked Architects of the West Kingdom. Um, I kind of wish I hadn't waited so long. So you guys already knew all of this secret before I did, but I'm only uncovering it. So yes. So that's that. Okay, so the next thing I bought, this was like a sympathy shop. <laughs> you know you know the way other people have bad days and they go shopping or they buy ice cream or whatever it might be? Um, I buy board games. Um, so I've had kind of a, a rough month. Um, that would be a really big understatement. And I'm the sort of person that when something kind of blips, you know, out of normality, I find it really hard to pull myself back together. It takes me weeks. Um, so I had so I had a really rough day and afterwards I picked up a copy of Underwater Cities. Oh god this game. <laughs> so Underwater C Cities is um, made by Vladimir Suchi and I think I've actually played pretty much all of his other games and this is the weird thing so he's made Pulsar 28 I want to say 49 I never remember the number I just call it Pulsar. It was the first game we had and we didn't mind it, but it was a table hog and we weren't particularly, you know, you weren't mad to play it, but it was okay. You know, that kind of, the kind of thing. So that was the end of Pulsar. The next thing we picked up was Last Will, which is also by the same guy. And that's a game about getting rid of your money. <laughs> and we played it and it's really interesting, but it just messes with my mind because I keep like, I need to make money. It's like, no, 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 you need to get rid of all your money. And just that kind of, you know, flicking the switch of your brain is, is really, really tough. I do think it's an interesting game and it's still here. So, you know, that's the other thing. And then recently uh, we picked up Shipyard. Someone who watched my channel recommended that for me some time ago and I managed to trade for a copy of it. Um, Shipyard's really, really good. It's got far too many components, but it's a game where you build ships and there's a really weird roundel thing to determine, you know, which part of ships you may pick up this round. But it's really, really good. So I've had lots of hits and misses with this guy. And then, so Underwater Cities comes out and everyone's hailing it as like a new type of terraforming Mars. Um, love terraforming Mars. Um, but we're dubious because of this, the, uh, because of the designer. And also the more things you hear about underwater cities, the more suspicious you get. Because you hear all these things, it's like, oh, there's like a dominant strategy and all this kind of stuff. And I'm just like, but we haven't played the game. And for ages, we'd look at it and it's, it's quite expensive. It's, it's a pricey game. Um, and we're, and I, I just, I eventually at one point I said, there's going to come a day where we're going to get a copy of this because the only way to know is to actually play it. And since it's unlikely that any of our friends are going to buy a copy, it was kind of, it was on our radar. So feeling miserable, um, going to the board game shop, it was the first thing that came up and I was just like, let's just give in to this will now. We're just getting pulled towards this game one way or the other. We should, we should try it. 
So, Omni Order Cities. Now, I finally get to tell you about the game instead of the crazy backstory. Um, is indeed a game about building underwater cities, unsurprisingly. I don't get the terraforming Mars reference. <laughs> I don't, other than you have cards. Um, so what it basically is, you, you have a handful of cards and you have three actions around to choose from a whole host of actions that go around your board. And you're gonna want to build cities, build like little plants around the cities to give you stuff to be able to build more things. Um, there's some end game scoring goals um, and stuff like that. The problem is these three actions a turn are just a kick in I don't know what. And even with only two of us playing, um, meaning, you know, kind of, you've, you've, a lot of, you've a lot of space to play with, um, it was still, I found I never had enough actions. I always wanted to do more things. Um, and the problem here, I think, with the, the comparison to Terraform Mars is in Terraform Mars, they go, here are the victory conditions. You find your own way to get there, right? There's a big pile of cards here. Do something with them to get to where you want to go. Um, everything is much more measured and tightly controlled in underwater cities. So for instance, there are specific sets of cards for each age. So your cards change over time. They get different or better or whatever way you'd like, like to put them. And I did find as well that some of the cards were quite, I don't know, un, un, unbalanced. Um, and some things were straight up kind of better than others. Um, on a whole, I just, I found it to be kind of boring because there's no, there's not a lot of freedom in your choices. Now, maybe that's asking a lot. And to be fair, in lots of games, you don't have as much freedom as others, but at least it's fun to do what you're doing. In this, it was like, it wasn't like you even had combos out of your cards. Um, like I had one big turn where I managed to like, I built the city and I built some plants around it. And to do it, I had to wrangle a whole bunch of cards. It should have been cool, right? It should have been brilliant. And in the end, I was just like, oh, the, the, you know, it, it happened. So I can understand why people would enjoy it um, because it's got that structure. And I think some people really like those type of games. But for me, it was very much like, I feel really limited in my choices. I felt very limited in my actions and not in a positive way. Um, it just felt like, I don't know, everything had already been predetermined for me, ish. I don't know. It, did, it didn't sit right with us. So it's actually, it's gone to our for a trade pile. We give it two goes. Um, and after that, it's just like, uh, no. So maybe it's one of those cases you either you love it or you hate it, whatever. But at least I've tried it. So, you know, I'm, I'm still happy with that. I think it's always worth trying a game out you're uncertain about because I always find I will continually wonder it doesn't go out of the back of my head, it, it stays there and it waits. You know, like brass. <laughs> That's one game I'll have to play at some point, despite me thinking we'll never have time to play an economic game. Okay, so that was Underwater Cities. Now, this is interesting. So I have one more new game um, that's actually here, but I have two games ordered that should have been here today, but it's early in the morning, so there's still time for them to get here. So we don't know, so we might mention them. So as of fr Friday, um, we've had a bit of a, a bit of a look, a bit of luck recently, actually, with a couple of um, board game purchases. Um, and they all seem to have come from Stefan Feld. Mm. As it stands, I own two Stefan Feld games. I own Castles of Burgundy and I own Bruges. Um, and I really, really like Bruges and I really like Castles of Burgundy. And you know, he's a guy that's got a reputation where some of his games are good and some of his games aren't. So I've had a couple on my list for a while, which are namely Trajan, Aquasphere. I had Oracle Adelphi as well on my list. And then last Friday on like a local trade group, someone was selling Oracle of Delphi for like 20 quid. So my husband managed to go and snag that within like an hour. I'm like, this is amazing board game delivery service. And so I played Oracle of Delphi last night. Man, that thing is impressive, like right out of the box. Um, there's a lot of setup. There's a lot of fiddly bits, but it was so much fun. I haven't felt kind of giddy like that in a little bit. You know, when you see the game all set up for the first time, you're like, Ooh, what are we going to be doing? Um, and in this, um, Zeus has sent out a message and you must complete some tasks for him. Um, I think there are 12 um, if you play kind of the full game. And so this game is essentially a race um, and you have a number of tasks you'll need to do and the first one to complete them all and get to Zeus wins. How it works is that you um, roll dice and they have different colors symboled on them. And everything on the board activates based on these colors. So you have a little ship and you're gonna travel around the place. So if you wanna go to a, um, a part of the map that's got a red outline, you have to have used a red dice. You have to end on that color. 
which is really, really cool. You also have to move temples around the board of the correct color, so you need the right matching dice as well. You can change these dice. There are also kind of heroes as well that you can level up and give you special powers once per turn. Um, this game's got it all. <laughs> it's got like a little bit of everything and I had, I had a lot of fun with it. I didn't win and I got really bad at remembering what colors I needed for what. It was that kind of day. Um, but yeah, I, I was really entertaining. We played it in under an hour in our first play. So I think it'll be like 30, 40 minutes once you get to grips with it. And I was just a delightful little like travel around adventure. So yeah, good job Stefan Feld. I was very impressed with or Oracle of Delphi. Um, what's even weirder is we've got like little colored barrels in the box and they're not even mentioned in the instructions as to what they are. Um, and I don't I don't know what they are at all at all. We're not even sure what they're used for. They're listed nowhere. So if you've played Oracle of Delphi, Delphi and you know what those little barrels are, please send a self-addressed envelope to here. That would be cool to know what they are. Um, so yeah, so that was Oracle of Delphi. So the other two that are supposed to be coming, um, so the first one is Merlin. And this is yet again my husband's on a quest. You can tell it's kind of the end of the month and he's watching for board games. Um, is Merlin. And this is the first game we've ever bought from eBay. Do do do. Um, but it was super uh, it was super cheap, but not so cheap you might think it was Chinese. Um, and we're waiting for it to arrive and it's taking forever. As in the package like sat in England for like a week and did absolutely nothing. So we were a little worried, but apparently it's on the move again. So God knows when Merlin might arrive to take note, another Stefan Fell game. Um, and finally, um, I'm getting a copy of Trajan. Now that's coming from a shop. Um, and I've wanted to try Trajan for ages because I've seen the wheels. Um, you know how I feel about Randell's and it's also a Stefan Fell game. So we're having like a, a Fell dissonance around here um, eventually. So hopefully that'll land later today. Um, I might even unbox it. Um, but yeah, I love getting my hands on some of the older games. I don't always need the new stuff. And besides, I haven't found anything good in the new stuff as of late. Maybe I will um, as more things get pre-released for Essen. But for now, I'm quite happy um, kind of exploring, you know, older classics. So that's all the stuff I've bought. Um, so the reviews for this month, uh, one review copy, and you've, you've already seen it because it's already been released. Um, and that is for Heroes Welcome. So if you want to know more about Heroes Wel Welcome, you can watch my video or the unboxing video. Um, I don't normally um, review games that quickly, but this one had a specific request to be done by the end of the month. So that was kind of like, <gasps> play the game, play the game, play the game. Make opinions, got opinions, fill them. <laughs> I normally like have quite a slow process. I take my time going through things because I want time to digest everything I've played. You know, I don't want to sit down and play a game once or twice there and then immediately make a video. I'll play it once, I'll breathe a bit, we'll come back to it, breathe a bit another time and then I'll sit down and I'll write my script and then I'll think about it some more. You know, I don't ever want to be hasty um, with my impressions of a game or my review of a game. I, I want it to be thorough and I want it to be proper and accurate. Um, so it's tough to do something quickly, um, but to be fair, Heroes Welcome um, was pretty easy to do it with. Um, it's a game about um, a bunch of merchants who are trying to, well not trying to, who succeed in buying loot from adventurers who have just been killing things in the dungeon. But you're also making items um, to equip the people, well the monsters, who are going into the dungeon to try and kill the heroes. It's a really, really clever concept. Um, and you know, an, inter an interesting game. So that was kind of the, the review one for, for this month. I do have some more due, but it's September now. And it's funny, I was trying to wind things down in the coming up to Essen. I wanted fewer, you know, games to review from, from companies. Um, and just, I was gonna sit and kind of chill and review some of my own games until Essen happened. But it turns out, you know, more things are ramping up in the, you know, the advance of Essen. So there'll be more games coming your way soon um, that are probably gonna be released at Essen. So that, that's really kind of exciting. Um, I think it's very, like the nicest feeling in the world is when a company reaches out to you and goes, hi, would you review our game for us? And of course I have no ability to say no whatsoever. Um, at least most of the time I'm getting better at that. So those have been all the new games this month. Now we did have some trades though. 
Um, as you guys know, I love a good trade. I'm amazed there are any trades left in the world at this point after all the trading we did last month. Um, so we'll go with trades. So the first trade we had this month, this is this is a very exciting trade. You might you, you might know why. So I traded away my copy of Papua. Um, so if you want to know more about Papua, Papua, there's an entire review based on Papua. And it seems like the only really negative review I've, I've ever had to give. Um, and I traded that away for a copy of Torres. Torres is a Spiel des Jahres winner um, from my friends Keatling and Kramer. Way. It's kind of the, the fourth game that goes after the Mass Trilogy, which is like Tikal and Java and Mexica, which I really, really love. And these are my two favorite designers and I wanted this for quite a while. So it was really awesome that someone came to us with this trade. Um, I was like, yeah. So like Torres is basically a castle building game. Um, and it reminds me so much of Santorini, it hurts. <laughs> it's the same idea where you're building little towers on top of towers. Um, in this one you're scoring points kind of for how many um, towers are in your whole length of building. And then there are some cool cards to be able to swap things around. You can also score other people's buildings and you want to get it as high as possible while also being as big as possible. It's really kind of an abstracty type game and I'm absolutely bloody awful at it. But um, I like it. <laughs> I can I can see um, why it's a Spiel des Jahres winner. It's got it written all over it. So I want to play more of it. I've only played one game so far. I wonder can I be taught to improve? I just can't plan ahead enough to go, oh, I need to build this to get there, to get that. You know, one of those. Mm. So that was that. And then the second trade. Yeah, this is also for a Michael Kiesling game. So I traded away Great Western Trail. That is the box with the old men on the cover. Um, Great Western Trail is, what is it? It's a Euro game, you're on a trail. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> you're basically rustling cattle to get to a train at the top of the map. Isn't that, isn't that what it's really about? Yeah, getting cattle and employees and stuff to do all of that more efficiently. Um, Great Western Trail is actually a fine game. I will always say that about it. It's, it's a very good game, just, it. You know, we just had other games we would rather play over it. So, you know, I always say that when I'm trading games, I'm never getting rid of a bad game. I don't think I've had a really bad game in a very long time. There are plenty of good games, but I think when you have a collection or a bigger collection and you know what you want, there's a lot of competition for a new game to be able to stand out amongst what you already own. Um, so Great Western Trail just, you know, doesn't cut the mustard. Um, and in exchange, we got... And I've already forgotten, have to check again, haha. -ha. So a Michael Kiesling game, Woo and this one's called Vikings. Um, so this is another one where someone reached out to us for a trade, which is so much better than having to go find it yourself. Vikings is brilliant. Oh, I, I'm loving these older games. Jesus, they're just so good. Uh, maybe I'm just a simple person at heart and I don't really care about graphics that I just design and gameplay. But Vikings is indeed a game about Vikings and you have like your little Viking wooden meeples and they're building, they're exploring new islands. Um, and what's really cool about this is it's essentially a tile building game with color matching properties, right? So the, like, the idea is that, you know, for all kind of islands you have below a particular color, they will score. It's kind of hard to explain. There is a roundel, um, Yes, I know. I love, I love a good roundel um, with, with coloured Vikings around it and you pick your tiles from that to decide where to place them out. And then there's a couple of different kind of scoring mechanisms based on where things are. And you have to defend from raiders and all of this in basically like a little tile laying game. It's like, it's like miniature Carcassonne with scorings by colours. It was awesome. I was really, really impressed with it. It's very simple. It's very fun. And my friend Board Game Rants has assured me that it has a, a good solo mode apparently. So I think that's even better. I can, I can imagine that. Um, so yeah, really, really impressed um, with the older stuff at the moment. It was really, really good games. So why not tell me what new games you've got this month, if any? Are, are you holding out for any of the, the big cons or anything like that or for the new releases? Or have you spotted anything on Kickstarter that you thought was worth backing? I do keep my eyes on Kickstarter, but... The shipping to here is stupidly prohibitive. Um, you know, it would have to be something super special because I, I was looking at the Epic card game Kickstarter is up right now and with Star Realms. 
you know, it's a really, really fun little card game. I really, really like Epic, but just the shipping for it is crazy. Um, I'm just like, this is just cards, people. Cards, you know? Uh, crazy so yeah I want to hear what you guys have been playing or you know what you've been enjoying and things like that because this is no fun if it's just me I, I like hearing all your stuff okay so next on the agenda this is the part where we get to the games we've been playing um and I had to think really hard to talk to you about some games we've been playing that were not the ones I just acquired <laughs> which is which it has its moments so the first thing I want to talk about in terms of games we've been playing is Clans of Caledonia which I finally got to play with more than two players. So we had a friend come around and he uh, he's the type of player that likes um, having their own player board or building, you know, kind of their own civilization stuff. And the game, of course, has kind of sheep and cow meeples, you know, it just adds to all of it. It's, I really like clans. I think it's such a clever economic game without feeling overly economic. <laughs> Maybe that's just my approach to it. I love that when you build stuff and um, things get better, you get more items and stuff. There's just something super elegant about that game. And it was really interesting with three. Um, it really slowed the game down. <laughs> but it was it was still really fun. That game stands up so well. So I'm a really big fan of clans. I, I like that. It's the one I wish I'd play more of. And I need to convince myself to play with a different clan other than the milk clan. Because every time I play, I play with the clan that says you can sell four milk each round. <laughs> and I'm like, or says sell milk each round. I don't even seen four. Um, and so I always start off the game with my goal of making milk and then making money. Um, but someday I'll have to come up with another strategy. Strategy, But for now, I don't feel like it. <laughs> Do you have a particular clan you always play or you would like to play? Because I love that they're all slightly different. I think it, I think it just gives you incentive to play the game in different ways. Um, and I really, really like that. Okay, second on the list is a game I've reviewed this month, and this is Villages of Valeria. Way with the tiny, tiny castle. I'd like to point out the, the cover for that, like, not the cover, the thumbnail for that YouTube video holds one of, I think, one of the best photos I've ever taken of that little castle. Um, I'm super proud of that photo. No one else seems to care, but I am. I thought it looked amazing. And Villages Valeria, um, you can check out the review for all the ins and outs of it. It's just this really fun tableau builder. Um, and it's a quick and small little game. And when I got it first, I really liked all the mechanics and things, but I just, I wish there'd been a little bit more to it. And then I started playing with the expansions and that kind of changed everything. The expansions for it are brilliant. And I'll have a review for just the expansions hopefully next week. Um, I haven't recorded. It's a matter of fitting everything into a schedule at this point. Um, and I had a whole host of, I think I think I had five expansions and I'm going to talk about all of those in one big video um, and kind of see how useful and things they were, what ones are worth having. So if you already liked the game and you'd like a bit more, then that's going to be worth watching. Or if you think the game itself needed a little more, then I think the expansions really were the answer. Um, I always find it funny when a game needs an expansion to be better and um, you see that on Kickstarter where you buy a game and it already comes with the expansion I'm like shouldn't this just be the game I don't know why you're selling an expansion already when the game's just come out um, <laughs> I don't understand it uh, I think Villages of Valeria is an okay game without the expansions I think the expansions bring it to another level and that's probably just my own insight into things um, and whatnot but I've had a lot of fun playing it I like how quick it is to play I like it's clever and I love you get to do stuff on your opponent's turns I think that's one of the best features ever invented for a game um, to be able to do that. So that's Villages of Valeria. And the last thing I've been playing, I'm finally getting, finally getting around to these, is Mint Tin Skullduggery. What a title. Um, so I'm finally getting to play some Mint Tin games. Um, and I'm going to be doing... Um, I don't want to say live playthroughs because they're not going to be live. I'm going to be doing some playthroughs um, of these mid to tin games. I've got a couple of them and I'm looking forward to, I'm actually trying to find some sort of mat to put on my table so when I make the video, you know, you can see all the lovely little pieces all that better. Um, these games are gorgeous and they're gorgeously made. And I've never had anything in a tin before. I think I talked about these last month. People explained that in America, mints come in tins. Okay, that makes a whole bunch of sense now. Um, so Skullduggery is really like, so basically it is a dice rolling game where you're trying to get like 15 skulls um, by rolling particular numbers. You can also match sets and things like that. 
and you can also roll dice that take points from your opponents which is super super nasty um it's a really light little fun game i could definitely manage, imagine me playing this while traveling or being out somewhere a, a lot of people talk about these small games as being very very portable I don't go anywhere. I don't have a traveling life, so I never really get to try these things out in the wild. <laughs> Does that make sense? Um, but I can really quite appreciate the game. It's got really nice components. It's super fun and quick. Um, I think it's one that would appeal to a whole lot of people, and I say that a lot, don't I? But I think a lot of people are like this. I think it's cute and fun. Um, you know, not every game has to be, you know, huge to be enjoyable, and they don't always have to have complex mechanics either some of the best games are the simplest ones um and i like yeah I, I quite liked it i liked it more than i thought i would because I, I was i was only mild, only mildly concerned um so yeah so those are the kind of games i suppose been playing this month i got to play some party games as well because there were people over for our nfl fantasy draft hey so got some witch and wagers in got to play gizmos I haven't played gizmos in a while i, I really like gizmos um gizmos is like the upgraded potion explosion um where you've got balls and your you colored balls and you're matching them to build different gizmos and build an engine and then when you do things your entire engine will trigger it's it's really really fun and super and super super cool um it's always a good one to pull out for um new people being around because it's just like ooh, it's really impressive on the table so yeah, so those are all the games. I haven't been playing a ton of games just in the evenings and stuff like that just because I haven't felt up to it. I find that board games can are, are taxing. They involve a certain level of brain power, I think, even regardless of what game you're going to play. There's something about deciding that you're going to sit down at the table and you're going to play a game now that even itself is a type of effort. Um, but I'm working I'm working on that and things are hopefully um, looking a little bit better. I had, I had a bunch of actually nice news um, this month to do with Board Game Inquisition, which was super, super nice. Um, and that really, I know it sounds lame, but I actually don't care. But that really kind of helps your confidence a lot um, to know that somebody out there thinks that what you're doing is worthwhile because the rest of the time I'm just here at home and trying to talk to people about on the internet about board games playing games and stuff like that but it you know it's just the the difference that makes when someone kind of reach out reaches out to you like that or notices you or i don't know yeah it all sounds horribly insecure probably because it is um but yeah you know i think everybody wants to be validated or to know that their work is valued right um so yeah but so things have been going good for board game inquisition and there'll be some changes in my video style coming soon i don't know if any of you noticed but i put out a call on the internet and i was looking for um suggestions to improve my videos um because if i'm honest i'm going to be i usually am is that i think i make relatively good quality videos right i, I think you can all hear me well and see me well and things like that um, I don't think I'm the most entertaining reviewer, right? I know shut up and sit down. I'm not making jokes and stuff like that. I'm just, I'm just being me, and I'm, I'm okay with that. But I would love for more people to get to see the, the videos I make, right? And a lot of that really does depend on the game, is what I've decided. Um, because I thought I had some real crackers of games this month, some really good ones that I'd love people to know more about. But how do you kind of entice them in? So I'm, I'm trying to make my channel better in whatever way I can. So if you've got any suggestions or insights or things you'd like to see me do more of or less of, um, that also works too. I had some great help already and that's kind of restructured a little bit of the, the five things format. So it'll be a week or two before those reviews start coming out because you know I'm ahead a week or two in filming. Um, and I hope you like those. I think, I think it makes my videos a little more focused if that makes sense and um, that should be good and I managed to learn how to use Adobe After Effects and I made like a special graphic and everything so I'm super proud of myself for that but that's mostly the stuff that's been going on around here where I've been trying to clear off games so I can get ready for Essen but then more games keep arriving because Essen is about to happen I'm just trying to make everything the best that I can like you know I'm not going to be no YouTube superstar I don't think I'd want any of that um I just want to share my games with you be honest about them and be me and do it in the best way that I can so yeah that, that's my continued quest here these days um so yeah so what have you been doing this month soul searching <laughs> oh my crazy soul searching nah it's not even that I, I look forward to hearing what you've got what you've been playing 
or what you're lusting after. Is there anything on a wish list? Because I don't have a wish list at the moment. Um, I've given up on making wish lists. They're, they're just terrible, terrible things. And they put pressure on everybody involved. So I don't have a wish list anymore. Um, I'm better off without it. Um, so yeah, it's all good. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you because you've heard on all the hearing from me. And that has been August. <sighs> talk about August. I wonder what September is going to bring. <laughs> let's, hope, let's hope it's more exciting um, and less crazy. That would be good. Less crazy. All right then everybody. Thanks for watching. Um, I love having you here. Um, and until next time, I guess I'll be here playing games, asking questions and of course perusing my collection. Take care everybody and thanks for watching. Bye bye.